You're tuning in to the Black Hollywood Live Network, featuring news, interviews, and commentary on all things Black Hollywood. Hollywood redefined. From Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is Black Hollywood Live. Next, featuring intimate and in-depth interviews with Black Hollywood's next edition of Stars and Influencers. Black Hollywood Live. Hollywood redefined. You're listening to Black Hollywood Live. And now, the host for Black Hollywood Live, next... Welcome, welcome, welcome to Black Hollywood Live and Next, where we keep you updated on what is hot in Hollywood. I am your host, Ebony K. Williams, your legal and political expert, and I'm joined by the lovely Miss Jessica King. She is a producer at Dish Nation. Hello. Hi, Jessica. And comedic extraordinaire, Mr. Nick Perdue. What's up? What's up, what's up? So joining us in studio, this is a young woman who went from working the Emmys as a waitress back in 2009 to attending the Emmys red carpet in 2012 on a nominated show. I'm talking about HBO's comedic, just, it's so much fun. It's their show Veep. I'm talking to Sufi Bradshaw. Hi, guys. Hi, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Thank really you so excited. much for, for joining us. I mean, yeah. it's, I'm a big fan of the show, so I'm just really excited that you're here with us today. Yeah, I mean, it's, the show is getting some rave reviews, and it's just been uh, it's just been a blessing yeah. to have yeah. so much. Yeah, you know, and it's just yeah. going on. We just got renewed for a third season. So Woo! Extremely Woo! excited. Yes. Extremely excited. Yes, it's super funny and it's super smart, which we'll get into in a second. But first, you. We're going to learn about you, Sufi. Um, you come from two very strong cultural backgrounds, some Sicilian stuff going on and some Ghanaian stuff going on. Can you tell us about some differences and some similarities with those strong cultural influences? Yeah, I mean, growing up with my mom, who uh, raised me, she actually raised me as a single mom. Dad wasn't in the house. Mm -hmm. Pretty typical story. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mom was great. And, you know, her background is from Ghana, but obviously she was first generation American. So, you know, being in Chicago, West Side, you know, in a family of nine, you go, it's just regular run of the mill. So yeah. we didn't get a lot of that culture. Right. Um, I think she had gotten more of it. And uh, her biggest you know, sort of goals for her children was to make sure that we, uh, that we were extremely American in that sense. And mm -hmm. we got, and we got um, educated that way. Sure. But, but I do have hopes of going to Ghana someday. Awesome. Absolutely love to go. Awesome. And then uh, on dad's side, it was Sicily on his, uh, on my father Michael's side. And I mean, how could you not like Italy? Yeah. <laughs> Probably the best, right. most beautiful place ever. You know, it was sort of Moors going to conquer Sicily during that time. And we came up with a lot of, um, a lot of Moorish, which were dark Italians, which were Sicilians, and mm. such a culture that I still have to, to dive into, mm. and I can't wait to do it. Awesome, awesome. Do you cook at all? I do. Okay. I've been known to chop no. a vegetable or two, you <laughs> okay. know? All right, all right. <laughs> the microwave. There yeah, you go. Right. <laughs> yeah, well, your Uncle Ben's, you know, minute rice. <laughs> but no, I love cooking. I think we grew, grew up, obviously, you know, in a big household, and um, finances being what they were, you had to learn how to cook. And awesome. thank mm. God that we did, because it's like, uh, it comes in handy yes, it all does. the time. Awesome. Yeah. Well, you mentioned that you grew up with nine, uh, nine siblings. I'm sure you have the craziest childhood stories. <laughs> <laughs> what is your favorite childhood memory with all your your brothers and sisters? Oh God, what a great question! Uh, how long do you have? You know, <laughs> I mean, just great. Um, I think one of them would probably be being a, remembering a, a Halloween. Mm. Uh, and sort of obviously with a family of nine and a single parent, uh, we didn't have so much, we didn't have too many finances for costumes, mm. but my mom was so great. There was like this costume party at school and she's like, we're going to make homemade costumes. Oh, wow. <laughs> Love it. Love, Love it. it. <laughs> What'd you go oh, as? Oatmeal. What'd you go as? Yeah. I, well, oatmeal box sort of became a helmet and sort of a sheet was a cape. And I think I was Wonder Woman that time. At winning. Uh, yes. You winning. <laughs> winning. <laughs> you won with that girl. Yeah. Yes, you did. <laughs> it was such a great experience just to know that it didn't take a lot of uh, right. those finances but it just took a lot of imagination and love so yeah one of the one of the greater stories yeah. out, of that, out of that house that bunch well you've mentioned that your mom you know kept you guys on the straight and narrow is she still a huge influence in your life today uh, my mom's actually passed away okay. but I think she is still an influence yeah mm -hmm. a huge one uh, you know you you History never dies, you know. It's one of those things where the lessons that I learned from her are going to live on, and I will pass them on to my children. And what is just, just such a great lady, yeah. such yeah. an inspiration. So yeah, I, w I would say yes to that for sure. 
Yeah. And then just real quick, because like, do you like like still hear things that, that she said in the past? And you're like, yeah, she was right. That's so funny. <laughs> she was right, yeah. yeah, no, she, well, one of her statements was, uh, hindsight is twenty twenty. Mm. Yeah. You know, you look back and you go, if you have to look back on it, uh, you have twenty twenty vision when you can look back, but try to like yeah. have that, that foresight in the future. She was big on that. And uh, just do on others. You know, mm. just really be, be a giver, and uh, and she's such, such a team player. My mom was just a team player. She had a little football team with us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she, she, was she was coaching. I love that. That's funny. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. Now, you know, I was growing up. Now, do you feel that, that acting was, was something that you were, you were born to do? Like, were you just the natural? Yeah. Well, I would. You know, I, I God, I guess that's such a great question. You go like, when did the acting start? Was mm. it just being silly during Thanksgiving? around the table? Was it just dancing for company? Was yeah. it just, you know, being the kid who uh, would sort of play cops and robbers in the backyard with their brothers? And, you know, like, where did that actual, that where did the acting actually start? I think it, I think it is something that is, uh, was just like an origin thing. And I was always really just silly and always very playful and extremely Im imaginative as a child. So, um, I'd say that was the long answer to that. <laughs> but <laughs> for sure, yeah. Yeah, always sort of been that class clown person. Oh yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Well, Sufi, to say you are a well-trained actress would be a very gross understatement. I mean, <laughs> you are a woman, you have a degree from the Los Angeles City Theater Academy. You've studied Meisner technique, cold reading technique. You've attended uh, the famed Lee Strasberg, the actor's studio. Wow. I mean, do you think you could have possibly handled something as large as an HBO series without that type of just thorough academic preparation? Uh, thanks for asking. That's such a, such a great question. I am a huge um, advocate of studying. Mm -hmm. I think it's like, you know, when in doubt, just just pick up a book and do some studying. Um, I and I always encourage young actors or actors who are starting at any age just to study. I mean, that that was my big saving grace. Such an unpredictable business. There really are no rules of how to get success in it. But I say the one thing that actors do have control over is just studying, doing, doing some work. And so, yeah, I would say you asked if I would be would have been able to do the show. I think the show came at, at the right time in my life because I don't know that I would have been able to handle the shows, um, the uh, the amount of work that goes into it, the amount of discipline it takes to, to create an entire season um, without <coughs> a little bit of structure. And, yeah, mm. and theater and a little bit of training and learning about character study and, and sketch sketch stuff to be able to apply that to uh, to my character and hopefully characters beyond HBO as well. So. Mm -hmm. A follow up to that, Sufi, there are a lot of people now that work in reality television and they aspire to do the acting thing and why are you laughing there? Oh yeah, okay. God. It's, 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 this is, you're this, 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 it's funny. This <laughs> sounds like it's about to be a read, but it's not a read, I promise. Yeah, that's kind of where you're going. I'm, I'm like, okay. Do, 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 do. Okay, so these people that, you know, they aspire to to do what you do, to be a thespian. Um, and they're serious about wanting to do it, but they don't necessarily take the academic approach to it that you and several um, of your peers do. It, is that misguided on their part? What, what's your take on that? Great question. Um, you know, what it really is, it's, a, you know, as much as uh, reality TV is, I mean, it isn't as, it, so much work doesn't going into it as maybe like sort of making a Les Mis or writing, you know, right. Romeo and Juliet. Um, there's something to be said about the, the, the audience for reality TV. I mean, I suppose they wouldn't have a job if people weren't watching. So Certainly. I always have to look at it that way. And uh, there's some stuff that I think is funny. Like, I, I love the new rock show, The Hero. Mm. Like that's pretty cool. It's empowering. It's about getting people moving and like doing the, doing their best. Um, you studying in reality. I mean, what do you what do you say about that? Um, I will go back to what I said earlier, which is that I think studying anything is great. Mm. And uh, but I'm not knocking reality. Good, right. You know, Lord Child, maybe in you know, ten years, <laughs> <laughs> housewives of something. <laughs> <you know? laughs> right, housewives, housewives of the valley. Of yeah. 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 Right, you never know. There you go. Awesome. <laughs> oh, and I also do like the uh, the, the husbands of uh, oh, how, Hollywood. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so on this show, we had uh, the young lady that plays the um, attorney on that show, Cynthia McWilliams. Cynthia. Oh, wow. She was awesome. She's too. funny. Yeah. So you guys funny. Awesome. Maybe you guys could do a project together. Just that putting that out there in the universe. I am always <laughs> up for doing more projects. Producer credit. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. Right. 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 Hashtag pal, as our dear friend Jason Carter would have said. Okay. So now, now speaking about you know your diverse background, right? Because you know we know you've done everything from Shakespeare to a Comedy Central sketch series. Oh yeah. You know, and and even feature films. So what do you think is harder? Just kind of in in your professional opinion, is it is it the drama or is it the comedy? Oh wow. Um, both of them have their, their difficulties. I'd say the thing about drama, um, 
which is what I started out doing early in my career, was about really let, letting the moment happen. Mm. I mean, drama is really interesting. There is no time clock on drama. You know, it's really just about relationship and character. Yeah. Uh, what the heck's going on in the scene? What are we doing here? You know, like wh how how are we uh, how are we communicating with each other? And I think comedy is a lot more. It's just faster. Mm. So there is a time. There actually is a, a limit uh, of time that a joke needs to happen. So they're completely two different beasts, but I love them both. Um, I would say the challenges for both would be um, a lot of early actors, too, and me as an early actor, I wasn't able to like let uh, the moment become. Mm -hmm. You know, I think even Denzel Washington said that he can he can see a result actor from miles away, somebody who wants the result of the scene to get to the end so fast, mm -hmm. so they're not even just they're not even in the scene, and that's been my biggest uh, struggle to sort of learn how to let the scene become and just be there for it. As um, philosophical as that sounds, um, it's, it's, uh, I think it's, it's pretty common. And um, I'm learning, just working with the, the, the amazing cast of Veep, Julia Louis-Dreyfus and you know, Matt Walsh and Tony Hale, who's right. amazing, amazing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anna Klumsky, Reed Scott. Mm -hmm. They are an amazing bunch, and we are uh, creating that show together, like as a team. So mm -hmm. there really isn't anyone ahead of the team, and we're all listening and responding to each other. And it's just been such a delight. Absolutely. That's awesome. That's well, you did a backstage interview that asked your seven tips for acting success. Mm -hmm. And one of your tips was to keep plugging away. And you went on to say that it's about applying the time. And a lot of struggling actors out there um, might say that this is easier said than done, especially, you know, if they're not necessarily at the point in their career that they thought they would be at this time and what whatnot. So... Has this always been your philosophy, or was there ever a time, maybe um, while you were waitressing or while you were still building up your resume, where you were kind of sick of plugging away? Yeah, it's such a good question. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of, as, as I said earlier, it's there, there are no rules to the industry. There's no magic wand. There's no book really to show how to succeed. So, like, you go to college, you you know do the work, you learn the studies, you pass the test, you get a degree, you move on. Mm -hmm. In acting, it isn't really like that. Mm -hmm. What I learned, it's really just. Um, a lot of it, it's still a mystery of how to mm -hmm. get some success in this industry. And um, yeah, I think um, there was a time that I was extremely down and out. Like it was 2009, I think I was mm -hmm. waiting tables, uh, worked at Wolfgang Puck for a little bit. I worked at Universal Studios catering for a while, did the mm -hmm. catering circuit, you know, mm -hmm. that was fun. <laughs> and <laughs> fun. <laughs> fun. Not. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, not knocking it, but so much fun. Yeah. <laughs> learned a lot. Learned, learned a lot about service and a lot about myself in that job, so I can't knock it. But uh, kind of had stopped acting for a little bit. Mm -hmm. And um, there was this, um, there was this in like a, like a group that came along through my friend Omari Hartwick. Oh, nice. uh, he had started something called the Actors Lounge along mm -hmm. with his friend in Q and then their friend Ida. The Actors Lounge was a place where actors could come. They'd only have to pay a dollar. They could learn a scene or a monologue or That's a poem cool. or anything and just jump on stage. We, we were at Greenway Court Theater for a really long time. And um, I had actually met Omari doing catering in, I think it was 2000, and he invited me to that. And I go, okay. this is great. So I go to the Actors Lounge and instantaneously I was like, oh, this is, I'm back, you what know, you like I got some inspiration. Yeah. So I think it's really important for actors to keep in, to keep being inspired, also like buddy up with some people, mm -hmm. write some stuff, like always be super duper active, um, and and it's a practice. You know what I've learned is I even have bad days now where I feel like oh well, I kind of hope you know I'm I'm gonna get that Oscar winning part or mm -hmm. you know I'd like mm -hmm. to see um, just a just a lot of things happen in my career, but I have to remember that uh, it, you know it's really about practice and it's like um, I use the in the analogy of physics. It's like time and pressure. Mm -hmm. You know, a drop of water on a rock means nothing, but uh, over time the rock d explodes, and it's time and pressure, and just the, the applicants to, to the craft. So, yeah, I definitely had down days, though, and I think it's very common. When you first moved to L.A. and first really got into this, the Hollywood scene of acting, did you ever give yourself a time limit? <laughs> <laughs> like, ticking clock, right? Oh, yeah. Jesus. Um, you know, it's so funny. I was born in Chicago, but I was raised in Los Angeles. Okay. So I feel like when mom moved us out here, uh, I the clock kind of started there. Unbeknownst to me, like I didn't even know that that was going to be the road that I went down. So it kind of was a little difficult. Uh, it was difficult for me to gauge where I was, but also I didn't put a time clock on myself, you mm -hmm. know, and I didn't move from Chicago to come to L.A. to pursue acting. 
Uh, I was seven when we mm. moved here, so it was just a matter of sort of growing up in LA and having it be an influence, and then, and then going to school for it. Um, so no clock for me, but uh, I check with me in a year. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe there's a few things I'd like to accomplish, <laughs> and we'll see about those. That is funny. Okay, <laughs> so just to give people some context for that maybe aren't um, aware and they aren't big fans of the show like I am. So Veep is based off of a British style comedy. It's it's a politically based comedy, um, and really funny. Now, you said that when you initially auditioned for Veep, that you did not think that you had gotten this part, and you said that you know, hearing, waiting to hear back from your agent, I'm sure was full of some anxiety. How do you deal with that kind of interim period where it's like you've been in the room, you've been in front of producers, they're waiting to get back with you? How do you keep yourself calm? Lots of hikes, <laughs> 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 hanging out yeah. with friends, singing karaoke, sort of anything to get one's mind off of uh, that, that infamous call of if, if you're going to get it or not. Right. Um, as much as I've done and as much as I look forward to doing in my career, it's the same. I'm still a nervous Nelly when I go in a room. Mm -hmm. I never know if I've gotten the job or not, and I think that that's healthy, you know, and I, I hear a lot of other actors say that. Uh, keeps, keeps it fresh. I think... Um, not having, you know, and I've, I'm still learning this, but it's like not having acting be one's entire life. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, w once an actor books a role, they're going to have to bring life to it. So I'm a big advocate now of, like, just, you know, finding interesting and cool hobbies to do. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm in a yoga now and I, a hike, and I'm going to start painting, you know, mm -hmm. even though I don't do it very well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to start. And just, you know, having cool things to bring to characters, I think, is the best way to save actors and Know that it's a journey and not a, you know, it's like a marathon, not a race. Um, so often, I think actors just want to get to the end of it. They just want to get that big role. And what I'm learning just by being in Veep now is that it's really just the process, you mm -hmm. know. Yeah. And I'm trying to enjoy it and stay present in it. And But I do. I still get very nervous. Um, I read for a, a Judd Apatow film the other day, and I was just oh like wow. shaking, wow. you know, <laughs> beads of sweat, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and like I said earlier, two friends, circles of friends are huge. Right. Mm. Staying, keeping the buddy system going has always been something that's, that's, uh, that's helped me through the nerves. Yeah. Mm. yeah. You know, as so you were saying that, Sufi, um, about being, you started with the Denzel reference of him saying, oh, yeah. sta saying you can see a result-oriented actor. But then as you were talking about, you just said, enjoying the journey, they're almost the same correlation, right? You know, like staying, engaged in the process whether that's on camera or on stage or just in life yeah and, and it's, the, it's the biggest yeah. struggle we all yeah. have right yeah, yeah, yeah. i mean it's just it just i've noticed like oh wait so if you're getting you're getting ahead of yourself again right, <laughs> or like, yeah. you know right. um yeah he's a i love listening to denzel washington he's got some philosophies on acting that i think are amazing and uh that correlates now I, and it's not been easy is the thing right like i'm so it's a practice for me like practicing the piano or, you know, <laughs> drums or, God, whatever we practice. It's just a daily routine. Mm -hmm. um, and also just a big advocate of trying to do things outside of acting so that I can have something to bring to it. Excellent. Well, as Ebony had mentioned a little earlier, after your first audition, you didn't feel the greatest. You <laughs> if you had gotten the part. Yeah, I was like, yeah, that was a nice try. <laughs> Take us a little bit through that audition process because it seems like it was a really rigorous one. Yeah, you know, anytime, and I've, I've learned a little bit later uh, in the industry, anytime you're, you're auditioning for such a large role on such a permanent show in, in a series regular, mm -hmm. it is going to be pretty strenuous because the directors, producers, writers need to, to know that not only can this person deliver the lines well, but they're going to need to know that this person's a team player mm -hmm. and that they're going to be able to be involved in this gr group, for better or worse, <laughs> for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a family, for lack of a better word. It just is. And uh, so a lot of it, after knowing that I could do the part well and I could deliver Sue's lines and be funny, it was just about, it's like getting to know you stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's chemistry read stuff. And, you know, I remember going to read with Anna Klumsky, uh, who's also in the show. They f flew me out to ba Baltimore. And I loved her since that movie My Girl. Mm -hmm. My Girl. Right. Oh. Of course, we all do. I was like, oh my God, I wanted to be her so bad. <laughs> <laughs> like, we all wanted to be that girl. Yeah. Right? And, yeah. uh, so that was, that was nicer. And, she, and when I got there, she was such a delight and such a pleasure and such an intelligent actor and just really, really warm and welcoming. Mm -hmm. Uh, that was huge, uh, but you know, you were asking about the nerves of it, or yeah, right. yeah. You know, I'm still nervous to this day. I still, you know, read script the scripts of the show, and I don't always know what's going on or if it's funny. That whole idea of a, if, if if a comedian's funny, you know, mm. right? And how do you know? So it's still it's still a battle for sure. And uh, you went through a couple auditions, right, for the show? Yeah, they had us. They had us. So I sort of gotten the call just from my agency, standard. 
uh, prepared for it, learned the lines with the buddy, just learned the lines, went in, read for it. It was a Skype audition, so because the uh, pr producers and directors were in Baltimore scouting at the time. So I was like, Skype shake, you know, <laughs> uh, crazy. So you're sort of talking to the screen, and you're like, well, this sucks. <laughs> I, I don't think that it's registering <laughs> well. So but I did, the, I did the Skype read, and that was great. I walked out. I was like, oh, well, didn't book that. So glad I came. Thanks for playing, you know. And I got a call, and I had gotten a call back, and it was a second Skype audition. So I was like, oh, at least I had done something right. Um, walked in the room. Obviously, it's a different day, so it was a different you know, atmosphere. Mm. It's not going to be the same as the first read, which I think is really big for actors to remember. It's, it's going to be about whatever's happening that day. Mm -hmm. And uh, read again, and then I got directed. They mm -hmm. were like, that was good, but do this. And I was like, oh, shoot. Lost the <laughs> job. All right, well, <laughs> nice meeting you guys. <laughs> you walked out. He didn't hear anything for a week. And I'm like, oh, well, I, gave, I gave it a good shot. I got far. Um, got in a call from my agent. I had actually just uh, said yes to doing For Colored Girls. Oh, on wow. stage, yeah, that was a big one. That was in, I think it was in Anaheim. Mm -hmm. No, Riverside. Okay. Yeah. And um, so I'd said yes to that because I thought that I clearly hadn't booked me. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I'd gotten a call right as we were going to have an opening night that I, had, that I had gotten a chemistry read to go to Baltimore and they were going to fly me out. And that was a pretty big sign. So I had to uh, actually get my understudy to go on, which I was, you know, I wasn't very happy about. But I got on a plane the next day, went over to Baltimore, met Anna, met the Hamando Anucci and all the great guys, and um, walked out of the room still feeling like, okay, that was cute, but you know, you never really know yeah. that, you that you got the, the job. Mm -hmm. You just never, never know. And they were so great. Got on a plane the same day, landed, and as I was walking out of LAX, my agent called and wow. said, you wow. booked the job. Woo! Awesome. And awesome. I was screaming like a school girl. <laughs> I was like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> it was the best. I know, so it was fun. I was like excited hearing this. I'm like, oh. <laughs> yeah. like you got it all over again. <laughs> yeah, she got it. Oh, wait, it's in season two. She's oh, been on it. Yeah. Okay, never mind. <laughs> That's funny. They're all in suspense. Did you get it? Needles, <laughs> <and the> needles. <laughs> that is hilarious. Now, I just have like a real quick question because you, you briefly said that you had a, a Skype audition. Now, I did, yeah. What, was it, like, how was that set up? Like, did you go to a location, they had like a, a computer and you were like in a room, it was like the Matrix? And <laughs> it was, was totally on, like... like the Matrix. That's exactly <laughs> what it was. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, Allison Jones cast the show and so we went to her office in, on Ro Rossmore, okay. uh, Larchmont, near Larchmont. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's great. She also cast The Office and uh, uh, some amazing films. And so she set it up, walked in the room, and the uh, the computer screen was there, but it was. It Could you see them though, or oh, like the people like you, the, the, so? The their faces were super <laughs> the big faces, and yeah. mine was the little face the in little the bottom. Yeah. 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 yeah, so that was that wasn't nerve wracking enough to have to watch myself yeah. watch them watch me. I was <laughs> like, okay, totally. Yeah, it was a, it was a trip, and it was just like the Matrix. I think reloaded. In fact. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> That yeah, that's interesting. That's interesting. That's interesting. Now, also too, like in a in a, a recent interview, uh, you did say that Veep it's a lot of improv. So kind of like, what is that like? You know, because I know you, you talked about like kind of being in the moment and everything. So like, w what is that like? Just kind of you know going off the cuff with your cast. It's <laughs> exactly what it is. It's off the cuff. <laughs> it's scary. You yeah. know, it's really it's yeah. It's like it's like like being on a tight rope with no net. Mm -hmm. um, no. Uh, so that's awesome. It's been a skill to learn. The good news is that I've I got a great team, and we are all in the same boat, and we're all kind of sort of just trying to find the funniest moment. And uh, I love Julie Louis Dreyfus, and I love watching her process, which is, yes, this is funny, but how can we make it funnier? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where else could this joke go? If this yeah. is true about it, what else could really be true about this joke? And she's great at that, and always digging and finding the funny stuff. And she's also a great, um, she's a producer on the show. She's also a great leader in the sense of she makes it easy for us to play. And just mm -hmm. to have fun and throw some stuff out. And, but it still hurts when jokes aren't funny. It hurts. <laughs> <laughs> it hurts. Like little darts. <laughs> you know, it's like being a, bomb. Being being like, a comedian. Oh, yeah. you know? The worst thing is when you think something's funny and then no one else laughs. Like, <laughs> if you feel stupid and you're like, okay, this one. Like, it sounded great in my head. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> On paper, it looks amazing. That yeah, is gr <laughs> it's grammatically correct. <laughs> on paper, but yeah. Just didn't fly, huh? <laughs> didn't um, okay, so as I mentioned earlier, Veep is a politically based show. Um, now, before you landed the role of Sue Wilson, did Sufi Bradshaw, was she a politico? Did you know a lot about the world of politics and kind of the inner workings? Or did you have to kind of research that before going um, on set? Yeah, I actually, um, 
I didn't know much about politics. You know, I, I was the, the girl who liked to, to to sort of just vote for the president. Because yeah. I love I love I love competitions. They're great. I'm like, yeah. who's gonna win this? This is like American Idol. Right. Yeah. You know, LA's got talent. Yeah. Right? The drama of it all. No, yeah, it's, 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 it's so it is. true. So politics are amazing theater. I tell people that all the time. It really is. Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. total like it's on the cop, it's who's gonna win, it's a competition. I like that part of it. Before I uh, booking the role on Veep, but now post Veep, I am uh, reading a lot more about politics and getting more involved in um in politics yeah um, do you find yourself watching like john stewart or cnn or any anything do you watch stuff yeah now? no i'm i'm you know at night when i can't sleep of course c cnn is on in the back and i'm watching the daily show and i'm watching you know i love anderson cooper and okay. bill yeah. maher yeah, yeah. yeah as, as, as opinionated yeah he's great yeah, he's, he's great amazing. he keeps it real mm -hmm. um so that <laughs> he's he does. very real. <laughs> Sometimes a little too when keeping it real goes. <laughs> he's <laughs> funny. But no, he's really, really funny. And oh. uh, so Veep, um, as you know, in the show, there we haven't picked a party. So like, so like Julia's character, she hasn't picked a party. She isn't a Republican or a Democrat. Right. Mm -hmm. And we keep it really ambiguous for that reason. So because we just don't want to pick sides. So, right. um, yeah. So I can get. I haven't gotten too political publicly for that reason. I'm right. just trying to sort of make sure that everyone's included and. And not, uh, but I've definitely fo followed politics more. more. Yeah, yeah, and I love the first lady too. You know, we we had the the pleasure of going to the West Wing first season of Veep to do some research, and That's yeah, cool. Michelle was there. Uh, you know, we're all just standing on the lawn waiting, like like little children, <laughs> to be told what to do. And like Michelle, <laughs> she just walks by. She goes, "What are you guys doing here?" I'm like, oh, we're doing this show called Veep. She's like, "Oh, great, welcome." You know, she That's just walks awesome. in. She was so great, so yeah. inspirational. Awesome. Well, I was going to ask you, do you have a political hero? But perhaps you just answered my question. I'm not sure. She's great, right? And it's also not, she's she's political, but also, too, just a fun Absolutely. first she's lady. A, she's a yeah. mother of America in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. She's yeah. still a person, which is nice. Yes. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah, to see her be a person and just dance. And I, and I love mm -hmm. her whole get moving, you know, fitness and ob mm -hmm. obesity with children. I mean, mm -hmm. that, that isn't, that cause can't have enough attention. Agreed. Mm -hmm. And yeah. there's so much we can do about it uh, just by inspiring children to eat right. And yeah, I, I think she's great. But politically, uh, she's fantastic. And do I have another hero? Um, you can go back in time too. It doesn't have to be now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's so, what a, that's such a loaded. That's a good one because it's uh, it's not easy to answer. Mm. I mean, obviously, you know Abraham Lincoln, right? Yeah, look we, at appre like, we appreciate like, that. Like, look at that dude, right? <laughs> yeah, a dude who's like, I don't care what y'all say. Right, 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 I'm right. a. <laughs> but, but is it the vampire hunter? Okay, see. Yeah, you gotta, you know. <laughs> you gotta be specific here when you're talking about Lincoln. <laughs> or is it the guy from those commercials? No. <laughs> yeah. No, it just, I mean, obviously not living in that time. Just just a dude who would not care what people thought of him to go fight for civil rights. He's right. like, freaking dog. Well, what y'all gonna do? Certainly. Yeah. What y'all gonna do about yeah. it? So I love those guys <laughs> of people. I love those like like leaders in that sense. Mavericks. Rogues. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> any, yeah, of course. But, but politics are awesome. And um, I really like Veep because we're poking fun at it. Absolutely. And Absolutely. I think it's such a it's such a heavy topic. Yeah. It can be slightly daunting. So it's for us to make fun of it. Yeah. 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 Maybe just you yeah. know, because it's such it's so separated, perhaps with laughing at it we can like, you know, loosen it up some mm -hmm. and maybe find some commonalities. Yeah. Yeah. And I love that it's nonpartisan because the truth is the way the show is written and the way you guys play it, it's so funny and a lot of it's very accurate and it's like pointing fun at just how ridiculous some of these nuances are like these roles and stuff it's like you gotta take yourselves too seriously like it's just <laughs> yeah. kind of just yeah the writers are great that way you know uh, armando anucci is fantastic he had done in the loop before and uh, he is a british writer and right. a british director mm -hmm. and fantastic and you know it's just i sort of found myself talking to some of the castmates and we were like this is how Britain views America, right. <laughs> you know, and as they sort of should, it, there, there is a lot to laugh at in politics, um, and a lot of it is a popularity show, but I do really, really like bringing fun to a topic yes. that isn't so fun. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I, we like it too. <laughs> Well, let's talk a little bit about Sue. <laughs> <laughs> that girl, yeah. <laughs> Gotta love her. <laughs> so Sue, I love this. Sue is modeled after someone at the DMV. Yeah. <laughs> right? Is this based off of a particular DMV experience or just their general demeanor? God, right? And you go like, what do you mean by that? What do you mean by that? Yeah. No, it's, uh, it's a funny job, right? So you take <laughs> Sue Wilson's whose job is to pretty much, you know, ha just pretty much, 
you know, be the junkyard dog of that mm -hmm. office. You know, she, she's the no person. You've got to get through her in order to get to the vice president. Mm -hmm. And so you take somebody who has that much power and who uh, gets so much traction and so many calls and so many emails. And then, and then you go like, well, how do you, you know, as, as an actress, I was like, well, how do I bring this to life? And who have I seen? Because I often try to like study others outside to see workers or whatever. Uh, to get a character, some kind of an idea or something to start from. And uh, I was like the DMV. <laughs> <laughs> I spent quite a bit of time here and it's never much fun. <laughs> and people are always in a rush and trying to get out. And, and those poor people who work there, you know, yeah. like the idea of how much um, attention they're getting and how much they're just the bad guy. Right. No matter, you know, how, exactly. yeah, how, you know, kind they try to be or no matter how much they try to get your work done, they're just the bad guy. And over time, I would imagine that a person who gets that much flack will then just become a cold, you know, a stone-hearted, stone-hearted, <laughs> you know, robot. Yeah. And so, <laughs> so yeah, I go, okay, well, you know, and, and I approach Sue from the outside in, sort of starting with her clothes and her hair and that bun that, that we bun. love so much. I, lo I yeah. live yeah. Bun. for that bun, girl. I live for it. Okay. I love that <laughs> I love bun. That bun. I like <laughs> find myself wearing a bun now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I just tried to approach her from the outside in, so sort of the, the stoicness of the DMV. And so I took a worker from there and, and went, uh, but all love to the DMV guys, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hate them. Thank you for keeping my tags current. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> well, speaking of approaching from the outside in, what was that transformation like? How much of Sufi is in Sue? Mm. Right, yeah, that's a great one. Um, yeah, like I said, I just tried to approach her from her props. You know, you think of well, what's her actual job. As an actor, I try, try to figure out what's, what's right in front of me. All right, what do we got? Mm -hmm. You got somebody who works at the, the, uh, the White House who has to answer plenty of phones and emails and multitasks all the time and has to be extremely efficient. So they've got their binder, they've got their scheduler, they've got two phones, they've got a phone that they have to answer, they have notes that they have to give to the vice president and, and then and communicate with that entire office. Mm -hmm. And the kind of person who can do that is somebody who's extremely efficient and who doesn't have much time. So it's all about time management, right? Mm -hmm. So I approached her from that, I took her binder, I took her pen, I took her hair, I, you know, her stoicness and her laminate even and all the clothes that came on and. You know, once I put all that stuff on, I was like, oh, wait, I see this person. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, because I'm, I'm quite a bit different than that, obviously, just like more um, in my body and just more of a hiker. And, and, and I danced as well for a while. And so to be Sue was definitely like it was interesting. It's a practice to be able to stay in that character, though, because mm -hmm. I just want to, like, let my hair down mm -hmm. and like, mm -hmm. <laughs> and, like, you know, just, like, do the thriller dance or something at the uh, at the on set just to kind of shake it off. But, yeah, I definitely approached her from the outside in to build how she would sit and how she would even, you know, uh, talk to other people. Um, and then uh, and then it just all, it kind of just came. It came to me from there. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, I mean, like, even in season two, the directors are so great. They allowed us to play around with her. So she's a little bit softer this season, I mm -hmm. think. And I w I'm hoping that we see more of the human side of her yeah. mm -hmm. and not just sort of the joke of... <laughs> I know. totally agree with that. Um, as someone who's watched from episode one, I was so shocked this season when we saw her boyfriend. <laughs> yeah. Like, Sue's, Sue's got a man. Yeah. <laughs> and, she, and she was in bed with him. Sue has sex. What? I swear. Like, actually? actually? Yeah. yeah. No, 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 I'm, I'm pretty sure she was on her laptop in the bed. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, she was. She's like on her laptop. And like he was like asking. So she's like... Psh. Anyway, you know. uh, yeah, lower your expectations. We'll just be sleeping. Yeah, okay. it was awesome. That was the line. It was so it, is, it was so consistent. It's really funny. I promise. You. It, it's, it was so consistent with what we see from her in the White House. But it, you know, it just it was nice. It was nice to see her with, with her actual hair down, uh, literally right? Literally yeah. with her hair down right. and with her boo and yeah. She sleep so with a bun. She doesn't no. anymore. She used to. <laughs> those, those days are over. Yeah, That's funny. he's a great guy. Play, played by um, Matt Bishop. A guy that they actually found in Washington. Oh, cool. Great oh, wow. actor. A uh, lot of stuff that we did. We had a lot of great moments. Of, of course, it's in some of the deleted scenes, so you guys mm -hmm. can watch that. Indeed. And I think it, yeah, I think it's so great to, to see Sue with a boyfriend. Hopefully, will, will we'll we see, see more? Some, hopefully, we'll see some more. Okay. Okay. We I'm never know. She could have kicked him to the curb. You know, uh, we, we have yeah. to figure She's it out. She's very efficient. You know, <laughs> I wouldn't surprise me. Okay. So <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. That's <laughs> terrible. Maybe that was a little bit of ebony in there. I don't know. All right. So. 
so Sue is also very no-nonsense and very direct, um, yet she's very likable. Now, you've said in other interviews, you know, we all as black women know we have a bit of a reputation for being a little, <laughs> you know how we can be. Um, <laughs> but yet Sue's hilarious and very likable. How do you keep from crossing that line? You know what I mean? You keep her at the consummate professional, but she's never angry black woman. How do you manage that? Yeah, no, it's a fine line. Um, it really is. I am um, coming from such a diverse background myself and growing up the way I did with my um, my mom and dad and from their backgrounds and mm -hmm. going to a theater school very early on and learning about culture very early on. I um, thought it was it's maybe slightly easier for me to be able to see the humanity in everyone and just mm -hmm. more of a universal. So I wanted to make Sue more universal. Like she was cool. not necessarily black. Right. You know, she mm -hmm. just happens to be, but she's also, she's like every woman. Um, mm -hmm. I wanted, I thought that was really important to make sure that everyone could relate to her. Every woman, every, you know, everyone could, but also every race. I thought that was really yeah. important. And, um, you know, anger is funny, <laughs> right? You go yes. like, you know, that's a go-to, right? Mm -hmm. Really, and we've sort of <laughs> we've sort of seen it so much in our <laughs> in, a, in in a lot of uh, um, te television and film. Yes. So I wanted to be sure not to get angry, but more efficient and just direct. Uh, and it's also a comedy, so I have more room. Yeah. And these are more like characters, so I have a little bit more room to be. Um, just uh, straightforward with it as opposed to if it were a drama, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like let's say if it were a drama, it'd be slightly harder to make Sue not angry, right. mm -hmm. but you know, just, just a comedian. So I, I, yeah. I attest that to the, to the, the, the medium of it, that it's a, uh, it's a comedy. Yeah. And speaking to the diversity of the audience, um, you know, I think Veep is one of those shows that can, like you say, it speaks cross-culturally and stuff. And are, does it, are you surprised by, or how do you feel about, you know, a lot of times black, uh, the black community is disconnected from the political arena. Do you think in the age of, you know, we, we're post Obama now, or we're um, second term Obama, you've got shows like Scandal and, and now we have Veep. Are those types of shows kind of bringing a political awareness in terms of media for, for communities of color to be more engaged? Politically, uh, yeah, I, I would say definitely, right? It's a shoe in. I mean, just the the shows that you've just mentioned, like Scandal, and uh, you know, even there, the, there was the West Wing for the time right. that it was, and mm -hmm. also there's Veep. Um, I actually would have to say that having an African American president and first lady was the was the catalyst for it. Absolutely. Is what it seems like, and then it yeah. seemed like Hollywood started to sort of write more characters like that. Mm -hmm. um, Agreed. I don't know if it was you know Cart Before the Horse or which one that was, but right. uh, yeah. I, I I hope so. You know, I would like to do the yeah. Nielsen's ratings and find out how much of a yeah. of, a, uh, of a, the black community is watching and who's watching and why and the youth. You know, yes, and yes. how much of them are watching. It would be awesome to uh, to do those numbers. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I just think as as long as we keep cranking out the content yeah. that mm -hmm. uh, and, and allowing a space for that, and hopefully, fingers crossed, in five, ten, fifteen years, we'll yes. have a more diverse um, industry. <laughs> Yeah. Well, it's exciting yeah. to watch, I mean, as a media consumer, and also I work as a political um, strategist and commentator, and it, like you said, the youth. You know, I think so much of our culture and our, our communities, we are products of what we are exposed to. Um, and media consumption, of course, being one of the main ways that we get exposure. So sure. having your scandals or veeps, even though veep is a comedy and, you know, scandals a bit, you know... <laughs> dramatic but but still seeing political officials seeing roles people might not have even known existed prior to these shows I think is very powerful I agree with you yeah I think that the uh, media is huge right, right. it's the yeah. biggest thing we've got I mean you know who's who are raising our kids Absolutely. You know, I mean I have a, a, an 11 year old nephew who like you know he's he's always on YouTube sort of watching the latest videos mm -hmm. and he's like mm -hmm. you know the party rockers in the house tonight. That's, 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 that's his big old that's thing. He's thing. like shuffling, like, and I go look at this guy. You know, he's a, the smartest kid in the room, and he's like, he's a whiz on the computer, and he's looking things up, and he's interested, and he's in engaged and involved, and and I think that that is um. I think the media is one of the big, and that's why I like being an, act an actor as well. Like right. the one of the biggest ways to reach is uh, is through television and film, Agreed. radio as well, and so yeah, yes. I, I would hope that we put out uh, more. Yeah appropriate yes. <laughs> um, yes. examples for the youth um, and just inspire them. And we're going into such a web-based uh, place now, right? right. Mm -hmm. Web series are the, the next big thing. And right. uh, yeah, yeah, I would certainly hope that we could be the trailblazers for them. I, I think mean, so. The I biggest. think you guys are well on your way. Yeah, thanks, so. thanks. Yeah. 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 Biggest right. hope that I have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, we, we also know that, you know, something that you're very passionate about is this uh, humanity for the homeless that, that you do work with. So what kind of was your inspiration uh, with, you know, working with the or organization and the community around you? 
Yeah, um, I'm def definitely parents are huge, huge advocates of, um, of helping out the common man, mm -hmm. mom. Um, you know, I don't, I'm not sure that, that even that homelessness is even necessary. Mm. Not quite even sure w how it came about with the um, amount of uh, resources we have in this country. Mm -hmm. I'm not really sure why there's so much hunger. I'm like, oh, this is an interesting math question. Right. So you have all this food we're wasting over here, but these dudes mm -hmm. can't eat over here. And, and so I'm just really interested in the idea of, like, what's up with that? You know, right. like, what, what's going on in that area? So it's, it's intrigued me since I was uh, younger. And um, I just think if one can help, they should. And if one needs help, they should ask. And pretty pretty basic stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Like, give somebody a dollar if you've got ten. And it's like paying tides. Absolutely. Yeah. Paying tides. Yeah. Love it, love it, love it, man. It's, uh, and it keeps me out of my own head about all of my issues that I might have, about what I'm, roles I'm not getting or am getting or who's getting what and how come I didn't get that. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> right. As we all do. Keeps yeah. you a little safe. Keeps yeah. me safe. Yeah, yeah give it back. Thing is a perspective a little bit. Right? Yeah. <laughs> it could be worse, Sufi. Yeah. It could be worse. Yeah. You could be hungry. Yeah. Right. We <laughs> all could under be. Under the bridge. Yeah. 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 Love it. And I think that, um, yeah, and I think it takes a village to, mm -hmm. to, uh, to help. To have to just give, and uh, it's a, it's really is, is that kind of, of mentality of just if you have it to give, why not? So, mm -hmm. Absolutely. pretty big advocate of that. I also there's another charity that I'm a big Italy involved in called V Day, which is 100 billion rising. Um, mm. Eve Kessler started an organization to end violence against women and girls. Mm. Apparently, like one in three women will be raped, beaten in their life. I don't know if you've heard about this I organization. About yeah, it's oh. insane. So I support them immensely, and I know, right? I know you go one in three. Jeez, yeah, that's one's too many, <laughs> right? Yeah. Come on, yeah, right? Yeah, that's <laughs> nice. yeah. That means like one of us. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like I've been with my girlfriends, and we're like, and, yeah, and then and then you start really talking to other women, and you hear about their experiences. Yeah. And a lot of times, they have been victims of assault. It, it's it's yeah, it's ridiculous. It's in our own so backyard. Yeah, it's yeah. close, cl closer, like you said, it's closer yeah. than we think it is. So just raising awareness for that, empowering yeah. girls to be better women, trying to just be the best influence I can, like you know, in the in with with the success that I have. And uh, I think it's really important just to, to give back if you can. Um, yeah, long and short of it. And I and I look forward to do, doing more charity work in the future. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, you mentioned earlier that you're really into yoga. Mm -hmm. Kind of helps you clear your head. Uh, how did you get started with yoga? Oh, wow. Um, it was a good friend of mine. Uh, his name is Brent Lafoon. I hope he's listening. Hi, Brent. <laughs> he, uh, he started, uh, I just started taking private lessons with him. Mm -hmm. And uh, obviously yoga is one of those things where it, a lot of it is just a lot of time spent in different poses. And it's a lot of just patience in that practice. So I got started with privates. And then I got the courage enough to go to, to classes, like group classes. And then started to go to retreats. And um, it just sort of built from there. But my, my buddy Brent. It was the catalyst for yoga. Do you guys mm. practice at all? I've done a couple classes. I tried it. It's hard. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> it is hard, right? Yeah, it's hard. And the patience. When you I'm like, why didn't I like yoga? Um, the patience <laughs> thing. I'm, yeah. I found myself, no joke, y'all, like namaste and, and all this. And looking <laughs> up at the clock, like, are we still up in this piece? I got to go. Um, so I do CrossFit. But, <laughs> but it's amazing. <laughs> I totally get it. I totally get it. Yeah, there's a time thing. And as busy as the world is, you know. I was. I'm still like that. I'm still like that. I'm still looking at it. Uh, I do. I do. Bikram as well, which is uh, oh, the hot one. So yeah. then I don't, I don't have time one. to be thinking. But yeah. CrossFit sounds great too. Yeah, it's good too. Love but to but that. I heard really great things about Bikram. The hot yoga. That's yeah. amazing. Purifies, you, clears the skin. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. It smells terrible. Yes, this uh, is true. This is this is very. I walked very past true. a class the other day, and a, and a girl was just like in her bikini because she was sweating so bad. <gasps> <laughs> I was like, is that the norm? <laughs> wow. It slaps you with that funk. Like, oh, my God. Right. That's crazy. Well, you look really fit and, like, amazing. And you said you used to dance. Is, was I did, yeah. ballet or what was your, your dance background? Uh, dancing was my passion for so long, uh, it, from seven to even now. It's, yeah, you look like a dancer to me. Thanks so much. Yeah, mm -hmm. I used to, <laughs> the joke was that I sort of used to want to be a backup dancer. For Janet Jackson? <laughs> remember, just joking. Just joking. girl, <laughs> anybody. <laughs> anybody. That's like Tito. <laughs> Tito. Tito <was> Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> You're so nice. It's a Jackson, right? <laughs> that was funny. Jackson, li Jackson limousine, yeah, like whatever. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, was totally funny. love dancing. It's, it's a huge passion of mine. I would uh, love to infuse dancing with acting in the future. Mm -hmm. There's this great play called Burn This that I would love to do. It's about this dancer called, wow. uh, 
who lives in New York, and she's uh, she's just amazing. And uh, I do love dance. It'll always be a part of me, my heart. But mom, early on, she was like, Supi, yes, I know you really love this, but you might want to pick something that has more uh, substance to it or something that you can pay the bills with later on. Mm. And uh, thank God she said that because then I then got into acting. But uh, dance so. is huge. You know, you're a dancer. You look like you can... You know, you have a mean uh, <laughs> two-step. <laughs> it's sad. I mean, black men who can't two-step. dance. It's really, like, it's, it's sad. Like, there's, you know, people people die when I dance. Like, it's bad. It's a terrible state of affairs. It, you know, but anyway. At least you know it. At least yeah, you know it. We won't even talk about that. Well, I love that one of your beauty secrets is sunscreen. Mm. Now, it's an old, we had this conversation. <laughs> I don't know if it's wise tale or wives tale, but I'm just going to say it's wise tale. wives tale. Yeah. <laughs> it's just an old tale. It's an old tale. It's an old tale <laughs> that black people can't get sunburned. So right. what is your response to people who are shocked when they see you applying sunscreen or hear that you <laughs> even use it? Yeah, you know what? That's actually, um, that's a misnomer. Mm-hmm. Black people can get burned, and it's just about the pigmentation of the skin. And it's true. I actually went and like to a dermatologist, and it's true. I was like, "Oh my God, mm-hmm. you're kidding me!" <laughs> All the time that I've been in the sun, really, for real, this whole time. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it obviously does doesn't show as much because we got we have darker pigmentation, but it definitely affects the skin and wrinkles later, and it doesn't protect it as much. Um, uh, so sunscreen is huge for me. My friend who is an esthetician, Kenny, told me that you gotta start wearing sunscreen. Mm-hmm. In your twenties it's okay, but once you get to your like late twenties and early thirties, you gotta get that sunscreen mm-hmm. in you. And um yeah, it's funny. Isn't that a funny it's a funny it is. misconception yeah. that people think Because I burn really bad. I my nose peels, I get freckles and all my friends are like acting like it's like, Oh my gosh. <laughs> 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 I'm like, uh, happens yeah. all the time. I'm <laughs> human, no. hello. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's still skin. Well, no, it's actually um, really a scary statistic, um, even though white or other ethnicities get melanoma more frequently, it's more fatal in black communities. Uh, mm-hmm. It's fatal for us 77%. Um, we have a 77% survival rate versus they have a 91%. So we're right around 10, 12% more likely to, wow. to die from melanoma because it's oh. detected in the last stage mm-hmm. versus, and so it goes to what Sufi was saying, we can't see it or identify yeah. it as clearly as more fair-skinned people. So it, it's actually a real issue. Mm-hmm. And, w- and what a great topic to bring that up. It's huge mm-hmm. because you go like, well, now we're you know encouraging um Women, ethnic women, or you know, old yeah, so just go, just go get, you know, go to a dermatologist and mm-hmm. do the research, you know, yeah. do the research. Yeah. Thank you for, for bringing that up. Yeah, I love <laughs> that. Most when people I are that, like, yeah. <laughs> uh, no, it's real. <laughs> I, I wear like it's in my moisturizer. That's what yeah. I do to just do one step. And yeah, I'm not trying. To I get can't no tell you how many times I get that question. Why mm-hmm. do I wear sunscreen? Mm-hmm. Why do you wear sunscreen? <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, the more we can open up that conversation, the more we can find out that we're all kind of more alike than, than we, we are different. I'm going to start wearing it like. Guards on my nose. <laughs> <laughs> Real talk, conversation starter. Boom. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You'll never have to buy another drink again, Nick. Right? <laughs> Joking, you still gotta buy those drinks. Okay. <laughs> Open the club. Sunscreen right. right. on my nose. Sunscreen on my nose. What is up, that? girl? Yeah. yeah. It is. It is. Copper tone. <laughs> that is funny. So um you have a documentary as well. Um it's called New Leaves. And it really talks about kind of the turning point for young people and kind of where that trajectory point lies where they kind of maybe go left or right, so to speak, and you know, really kind of grow and expand or kind of get um, led down an unsavory road. And you've also told us a lot about how your mom really didn't allow for there to be an option of yeah. anything but success for you and your siblings. And I think that's amazing. Based off of what your documentary experience has given you and your own personal experience, what do you, what do you think is most determinative of that? Um, is it family? Is it environment? Is it social media? Like, what do you think most affects kids uh, in that way? Yeah, um, um, what a great question. I think it's uh, probably a bit of all of what you just said. Uh, obviously, you know, who's raising our kids is the biggest uh, question, right? right? Like, is it the television or is it, you know, their friends or is it popular? Um, what's popular at the moment? Um, yeah, I think that, um, I think that, um, 
delinquency in youth is huge, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's also going back to the thing of like, why am I interested in homelessness? Same as why I'm interested. I go like, what's the, what's the, di what's the difference between you got two kids who are, were raised in the same household and mm -hmm. you know, one is extremely successful and the other one's in prison. You know, you go like, mm -hmm. what, what happened? They have the same parents. Michael Eric Dyson much? Does, do you guys know the story? Yeah, he's like a professor uh, at with an Ivy League school and his brother's literally serving like 30 years in prison. Oh my God. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. I, would, I, would, I would love to interview him and ask him like what, what yeah. he thought was. And, mm -hmm. um, I think influences are huge. Um, Shaquille O'Neal was, was, you know, the Boys and Girls Club was a huge, it, it was, it, it's where he went after school to stay out of trouble. Right. Um, again, Den Denzel, Denzel Washington, mm -hmm. same, same difference there. Terrence Howard, I believe, um, Cuba Gooden Jr. Like you've got all of these, these amazing stories of these men who had, who had something to go, go to and some right. heroes yeah. to have. So I think that's huge. And just the question, I just want to like raise the question, and I would right. love to hear hear people's opinions on what we think. You know, mm -hmm. what what could be so that way. If we raise the question, maybe start the conversation, we can have a lot less youth getting in trouble. Yes, and more better. Well, I think it, it breeds accountability too. You know, when when we're ha like you said, we're raising the questions, we're having the conversation as adults, and now we can collectively be a little more accountable to our youth. Yeah, it'd be nice. It's the village mentality again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah old school. Like you know, you you come home, you used to go to all all you know. Right. You get spanked by all <laughs> of, of the neighbors before you even got your butt home. So it's like those old school mentalities. I think are uh, we have to just keep alive now that you know we've we've got the youth coming up and God are they smart? Yes. Mm -hmm. God are they little computer whizzes out there? You know, I go <laughs> man, they're smarter than we were when we were little. And mm -hmm. to keep them occupied and to keep them off the streets is a um, it's a it's a it's a full time job. Yeah, yeah. And now we, we know that you you've done a spoken word. You've been doing that for about ten years now. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So if you can, for us and for the viewers at home, <laughs> kind of give us wow. a little taste <laughs> of either like your most favorite piece or something that oh, you wow. haven't done for anyone in years. Nothing long, just just a little, yeah, just, little, just little bitty, a little, bitty bit, little huh? taste. We'll, Couple we'll lines. Snap and everything yeah. After yeah. yeah we'll snap, 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 snap. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Um, let's On see. Yeah, it's okay. Um, Here's here's when I wrote, gosh, one of the first ones. It was actually about Los Angeles, mm. and it's uh, it was it was during that time where I wasn't uh, I wasn't booking as much or doing or as motivated. So, mm. just a little, guys, right? Yeah, I, I'm gonna need you actually to get Sandman Sims to pull me off of this yeah. couch if I go on too long. <laughs> <laughs> so it goes, welcome to L.A., where your heart and your art is your soul. But don't leave it unattended because it can easily be sold. This is the land of opportunity where dreams come true, where legends are made, and where fame finds you. You meet these hundreds and thousands of hopeful new faces, off the bus with big hopes and big hearts and fresh starts and suitcases, surviving off of a wing and a prayer that their talent will shine. Because back home, they're told that in L.A., fame is gift-wrapped and handed out on holidays like Hanukkah, Easter, and Valentine. And there's more, I but I'm just going to stop it. So yeah, 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 Sort of begging, it's just the question of like the, the, the yeah. new faces who come yeah. to the city and yeah. it goes on and on. I'll have to write that up or maybe do it later. Yeah, I, yeah. 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 I, I want to hear. I, I, mean, I, I know, I, mean, I, was, I just was like, I was like my so vision so was so set. Engaged. Yeah, I mean, I loved it. I love that, that's so awesome. Well, like many aspiring actors, you were once a waitress at Gladstone. In 2009, you went to the Emmys with a catering crew. In 2012, you went to the Emmys as an actress. <laughs> On an oh, Emmy so nominated cool. show. Yes. Yes. Yeah. God, we had, we'd actually gotten nominated that year. Yep. We were the show as a, an as a freshman series. That's amazing. Oof, out of the gate. And, yeah. and Julia won it. Like, yep. Just such a great quarterback. Um, surreal. Yeah. Question, you know, that's the word that comes to mind. Uh, and also, I mean, that was a big moment. It was a it was clarifying. I go, oh, wait a minute. Um, you know, this can happen. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm living proof that one can, can one can make so have some success in this industry. Mm -hmm. And it was really just a really clear moment. And it was awesome. It was awesome to share that. It was awesome to, uh, you know, as much as I even learned from being a caterer there at the um, Emmys, where so often the, the wait staff is not, they're invisible. Mm -hmm. They're not people. And the interesting part of it is a lot of the, the wait staff are actors. Mm -hmm. They're waiting mm -hmm. for their big break, you know, and a lot of the, uh, people that they're serving um, for now you know being on the other side I see that it's just so busy it's such a busy environment and it's not uh, the easiest thing to conversate and to um, communicate with some of the, uh, the the actors 
uh, being on the other side of it, I make it a really big point to communicate mm -hmm. with the waiters. I go, okay, I see you. <laughs> I know who you are because <laughs> I was doing that. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it's really, really nice. It's been such a great um it's been a great time to be able to be on the other side of it and then then give back to the, the ones. Yeah. Well, I'm sure when you were there in 2009, you had those thoughts of someday I'll be here, you know. Was that an emotional <laughs> experience in 2012 when you when you got to that point? Yeah, yeah. You know, obviously the thoughts of someday I'll be here were mixed up with I really, really wish I weren't doing this right now. <laughs> <laughs> but then back to someday I'll be here. Um, and then being there in 2012, um, I was emotional. You know, I did get mm -hmm. emotional. You know, I got emotional for my mother. I got emotional for myself. I got emotional mm -hmm. for all the actors who aren't who aren't there yet. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the inspiration for them to be there. Um, I got emotional for the journey. I mean, you know, it doesn't take a lot for me to get emotional. <laughs> 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 but, uh, yeah, yeah, it was really surreal. It's just mm -hmm. what, what, a, what a great show and what a great opportunity. And what, uh, you know, I guess 1% of people are acting, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. come out mm -hmm. here. And it just was a big testament. So I'm like, oh, well, yeah. you know, this is, is I'm living proof that dreams do come true. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this, yeah. Is, this is great. And, um. I hope to be there again, and also, you know, I just think it's so important to just remember, like, for even if you're a waiter or you're at the Emmys, it's all kind of like the same, and it's just yeah. a matter of time, and I think that that was the biggest lesson that I learned. It's a very Cinderella moment. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was, right? Cinderella goes like, to the ball. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A gown and everything, you know? Yeah. Hope you didn't <laughs> you at midnight, you know, you're <laughs> good. Yeah, the clock good. strikes. Yeah. It's very Cinderella. Yeah. <laughs> so beautiful. Okay, well, we're going to go ahead, and now we're going to play our trivia game. Oh, wow. It's going to be fun. This is going to be great. Okay, <laughs> it's going to be fun. Um, so we're going to make this a special edition of Political Trivia just for you. It's going to be our Veep edition. It's going to oh, be awesome. Oh, yay. Okay. Okay, so the first question, it's going to be nice and soft, soft, softball question here for you. Who was George H.W. Bush, to be clear, the first George W. Bush? H.W. Bush president, so George Sr. Who was his vice president? Um, Ch Cheney. Dick Cheney? No. That's no. what I thought. Wait a minute. The no, first no. one, the daddy. Oh, the dad, not the other one. We'll give her a second chance, guys. Not W. <laughs> not W. Not W. H.W. <laughs> <laughs> the same yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh. The, um... We were a bit younger back then. We were like... I'll give you a hint. Yeah. He he was really mediocre by most people's standards, and he misspelled potato. Oh, oh like, man! Famously, right? Uh, that's <laughs> we're just gonna go around and round. Are we gonna get the bus? <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, she needs it. Hold on, you guys know the answer to it. Yeah. He's like, oh, so it was it was the seniors. His name give was her the uh, initials. St first name starts with a D. Did, There's oh, a character I... on the show with this first name. Oh, okay. On uh, your show. Did, and he's obnoxious. And he's obnoxious. <laughs> oh, was it? Uh, Dan Quill. Dan yep. Quill. <laughs> <laughs> I did not life. know that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, <laughs> yeah. Woo, I didn't get you to pause for not knowing, and I promise I won't stall as much. No, next it's okay. It's okay. I'm okay. Applauding, ah. I got that wrong too. Yeah, so. it's, they're, they're all hard. Okay, now oh. the next ones are, are seriously hard, and I didn't know them either. Okay. There's only one pres president in the 20th century who went from vice president and then was elected president. Can you name this man? 20th century was elected vice president and then went on to be elected POTUS. He was elected meaning he won? Mm -hmm. And he was the vice before that? Mm -hmm. Oh, was it, in, uh, was it Clinton? No. You're close. Yeah, no, it's okay. Who was Not right Chevy. before? Who was right before Clinton? <laughs> <laughs> Another question. <laughs> right, right. This interview was going so well. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> he was um. So Al Gore never won. Right, right. George H.W. Bush. Oh. It was the first Bush. So he was Reagan's vice president. Oh. He was Reagan's yeah. veep, and then he actually won, and then Clinton kicked his butt the second term, and he got out. Yeah, Clinton was awesome. He said he'd get the popular choice. Yeah, man, that thumb. He wins with that. <laughs> okay, one last question. It's going to be easy. This is for all the marbles. Didn't you left me back then, Booth? Okay, that's okay. We'll make our own <laughs> music. Okay. <laughs> well, this is just kind of a fun trivia. You're not going to know this. I didn't know this either, but where does the name veep come from? Right, so Veep is an, <laughs> oh, uh, it oh, was actually an acronym for Vice President, and it's a Britishism. Veep being the being the vibe. It would be VP, but they said V E E T. Awesome. And there Yay. she goes. Yay! For all the marbles. Give it up for Sufi Bradshaw. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Yeah. <laughs> yes, 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 yes.
Yes. She got it right. That's awesome. Okay, well, in our last few minutes with you, we want you to tell us about your upcoming projects and, and share a little bit of that with us and our viewers. Sure, yeah. I'm excited to start my documentary. That's a... Uh, it's been about a year in the making, but I don't want to shortchange it and just take the time. Right. So I, I intend to travel around and take interviews. Um, I'm actually going to be starting a web series. Okay. Can you believe it? Yeah. Wow. In the time before I go back to the show in September to okay. shoot the third season, I'm going to start a web series of comedy. So you guys keep keep yourself Yay. tuned to that. Sure. Yeah. Sort of day in the life of you know, it's very much reminiscence of actors and what we go through oh, and just and, and just and funny, funny and just funny stuff. Yeah. You yeah. Know? Um, all based off of the apartment building that I live in now, which I gotta say <laughs> is a little cray. And uh, between that <laughs> and the documentary, I am um, just, I'm still vacationing, but I'm also intently really working on the web series. And I've just, and I've been auditioning. And you're writing and everything. I'm for writing, the web yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm writing the web series. Awesome. Oh, that's really great. I'm that excited. Awesome. I'm collaborating with some, with some actors. I'm really Anyone excited. Anyone we know, do you know? Um, that we would, that oh. you could tell us about? <laughs> right, <laughs> right. I haven't had anyone say yes to uh, the writing part of it yet, so okay. I can't. Uh, drop their names, but okay. I will say that I will come back later. I promise and tell you. Okay. And it's going to be somebody you totally know. We're awesome. Gonna know. <laughs> That's exciting, <laughs> Sophie. Okay, Sophie, where can people find you on social media? Where are you uh, on social Twitter? Social media, Twitter is my big one. Okay. Um, Facebook, of course, there's a fan page and a regular page. Um, Instagram is great. And the new thing is Vine. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sort of Vine videos. Follow me on Vine. Okay. And I have a website as well. What's Excellent. your Twitter handle? Yeah. It's at Sophie Bradshaw. Great. Awesome. Mm -hmm. All one word. And you can find me, your host, Ebony K. Williams, at at Ebony underscore K. And find me at I am Jessica King. And I'm all over the internet at <laughs> the Nick Perdue. Awesome. Thank you guys. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Susie. What a, what we had an amazing time. time. Thank you so much for having Thank me. Thank you. Bye. Bye. From producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, Dario Kristen, and the entire BHL staff, we would like to thank you for tuning in to the Black Hollywood Live Network. If you have questions or comments, tweet us at BHL Online or email us at info at blackhollywoodlive.com. For more exclusive content, visit blackhollywoodlive.com. This has been a presentation of the Black Hollywood Live Network. The views expressed here are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of BHL or its owners or principals.